I'm David Engdahl. Uh, uh, my profession is architecture and uh, I've been doing sculpture for 38 years in addition to my um, uh, profession. Um, I decided I wanted to be an architect very early on in, in junior high school and pursued that. And then in 1971 I uh, saw a show in Pennsylvania sponsored by the state still put on annually, the 71 was the first one, where they invited uh, some Pennsylvania natives uh, to the show of sculpture and um, uh, the rest of it was jury and I saw that show and uh, that kind of started me on my career. I had been, from the time I could walk, um, building furniture, building toys. Uh, uh, my father worked with his hands and was a very fine machinist and my uh, grandfather also uh, uh, worked on uh, making dies for uh, stamping watch parts so he was very very meticulous. And my mother was a, a, a painter uh, still painting um, at 94 every day and uh, so I got that influence uh, from them um, and when I was in elementary school I seemed to take to artwork. Back then we had artwork in um, uh, elementary school classes and um, I, I was encouraged by my teachers there and I think that gave me the self-confidence to continue with my creativity. One of the things was growing up I uh, was in a, uh, um, a housing development uh, if, you, if they called them that back then, but it was a, an emerging housing area and uh, there were lots of building going on, so I was just constantly looking at what was going on and intrigued by what was going on when I was uh, very young, and that, I think, influenced me to go into architecture and just the creative area in general. My, my forms are a good deal all over the place. You can see from the pieces I have in here that uh, some of, I'm, I've been intrigued with this spiral technique. I just happened on that one day and I kind of like that. But I also like the interior volume pieces. Uh, they're very difficult and time consuming to do. Um, uh, when I was working full time as an architect, I, I could finish three or four pieces in a year. So I mean, I, 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 you know, and a lot of those were very complex pieces. And the pieces in the house there that I, started for the show, that I started with for, for the uh, show. Um, they're pretty ambitious and I, I wanted to get those done and out of the way first. These are a lot less ambitious purposely. Uh, so I, 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 I've been working a lot lately with color, uh, trying to control color, but it's a natural material and you can't fully control it, so it's loosely controlled. Um, and. Um, as I say, sometimes I will allow a piece to be randomly colored. I know generally the coloration that it's going to be when I'm um, uh, designing and, and assembling the piece, but until I put the first coat of seal on, on it, I generally don't know exactly what the coloration is going to be, so that's always a surprise. The, uh, the other revelation in the process is that when I cut out all these little pieces. I do a drawing and I think I know what I'm going to get. Just like in a building, you think you know what you're going to get. Um, then I uh, cut the pieces out and assemble them and then I've created a form that didn't exist. And that's the fun part of, of really creating something that, that didn't exist. This is a piece I, I did a little sketch for um, about six or eight years ago for a possible commission. I didn't work out, but I kept the sketch and I came back to it because I, I like the idea. This will be a hanging piece, um, and it, again, it, it has some of the similar flat characteristics of, of those two pieces. Uh, this is on, will be on the darker red side. Uh, mostly what I use is, is in the mahogany family woods, uh, and uh, I made this out. I cut all these pieces. There's a lot of little. If you look at the edge, you can see there's a lot of relatively small pieces and I made this mostly out of scraps um, and they'll have a, a red coloration. And there is a slight progressive curve where it's flat here and it gets a little steeper here and each one of these is, is a little different than the, the other. So it has a minimal amount of relief but it's, uh, uh, I, I think it'll probably 
hang from a wall. I made this piece here. I've, I've always, I just did this the other day. <laughs> um, I, I've always been intrigued with kind of uh, the shapes of, of bows, so <laughs> this is kind of my bow. And I, I made a template out of cardboard because all the pieces were alike. And I um, wanted to make this all out of the same sheet of plywood, so I have some regular coloration in it. And I can see here where I, I, I you know, I'll eventually bring this down to a point, but I didn't want to cut the wood that close. I wanted to give myself some latitude to bring that down carefully in the same way in the middle. So this will be, and I, it'll have some subtle shape on the vertical, uh, but it'll be thicker here and a little thicker here and some thin in here. Uh, but I can do that all uh, with my grinder. And this piece will, this will be another hanging piece that will hang on the wall, just hang there. So it'll be very tight to the wall with, some, with just a little space behind it. This piece here, which uh, uh, if there's any favorites that I have, this would be one of them that I did uh, last year, finished it last year. And I was out in the side yard here and found a, a little violet leaf from a little violet, little blue violets come up in the yard uh, out there every spring. And I found this leaf and it kind of had this violet form and it kind of, the violet leaves kind of turn back on themselves where the stem attaches uh, to the plant. And uh, that generated the idea for this form. And then uh, uh, this happened, I knew generally what the coloration was going to be, but I didn't know specifically where the darks and lights were going to be, but it, it uh, I guess on a random basis, happened uh, to turn out very well in my opinion. And then this, this piece here, which I also finished last year, I used a structure of colors. Again, this is all the same species of wood. Mostly what I use is Luan, which is a mahogany family, but I use a few other uh, types of materials. Um, I realized by looking at the edge of the plywood sheets that some were dark and some were light, and I, I worked with that pretty carefully so that I structured a, a, this piece here uh, with the light and dark. And of course, as you look at it, some of, in the dark areas, some of the wood is light, and some of the light areas, some of the wood is dark, and that's okay. Generally, by using a layer technique of, of really sliced pieces, um, I end up with a lot of small um, natural occurring uh, elements here that I think adds character without overriding the overall form of the piece. I think it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to make a piece like this out of a solid block of wood because it has this interior volume. So I've learned over, which I'm intrigued with, these interior volumes and secretive type spaces in some of my work. And uh, so I uh, learned over uh, many tries <laughs> that I can make a piece in using my technique in vertical sections. And I, I made this in maybe five vertical sections. And when I'm cutting the piece out, I cut little tabs around the piece so that I can clamp it and glue it uh, when I get it reasonably finished on the inside. So the first piece I did, I made in two pieces. And that helped a little bit getting the interior finished. But then I still had trouble with the joints. So the next piece I did like this, I made it in three sections. So I could clamp two together, work that joint pretty good, take that apart, clamp the other two sections together, work that pretty good, and get it pretty close um, when I uh, am finally ready to put it together. And of course, when I put it together, it, that joint's just like any other. So it's, it's using the technique to my advantage. Um, it still is a lot of work. My, the real problem, this, has, this happens to have on the bottom section here, a double concave. And it's very, very difficult to get a double concave, concave this way, concave that way. Get that smooth. It's, it's a, a, a convex shape like the outside of this. Most of the outside of this is convex. It's, it's much easier to finish uh, than concave. So I spent probably, a full week, if not two weeks, 
hand sanding the inside of this after I had it pretty well uh, formed uh, using my, my grinders and machines. So this piece is pretty formal. Uh, it's symmetrical. Since there's a layering process, every piece has an axis and that axis drives me a lot to symmetry. Um, so this is a very symmetrical piece, really two halves that are reasonably identical. Um, and I wanted a material on this uh, that was kind of a small module, not a large module like some of the other pieces, but a very small module and uh, kind of more uniformity to the color. And so I uh, got this material, it's called Okomi. Uh, it's only grown in a couple uh, African countries and it's, it's a marine plywood used mostly in boats. And so I selected this material for that and I went back to a technique that I had started maybe 25 years ago, hadn't used recently of laminating a piece of acrylic. There's a couple pieces of acrylic that are laminated in with the wood and the acrylic has the same characteristics in terms of movement as the, the wood itself. So I use epoxy glue on that uh, to glue that in and uh, join the two pieces so that I, I recognize the axis and the, and the two halves. The bases, a lot of people ask about the bases. I don't make those. Uh, it's the one thing in my sculptures that I wish I could control, but I can't. I do make templates and I have a person that makes these. Mostly I use uh, absolute black granite because I like the coloration. I think I like what it does with the wood in terms of offsetting the color, so, so I'm very... Yeah, the, these are tables that I made um, from some scraps uh, left over from a large commission that I did. And I just saw them little pieces, and again, using the same philosophy of building uh, a hole from a lot of pieces, I just kind of overlapped them uh, one, first one way and then the other to create the joints and then finish the, the pieces. Everything I do is natural finish. I don't color anything, I don't stain anything. This is natural finished uh, wood, just the way it comes from the tree. Every once in a while, if I have a piece that I want some integrity of color and there's a real jarring light color piece, I may put tone at a little bit with some stain, but generally uh, I don't use any stain. So what you see is the natural wood. The uh, this is a fairly ambitious piece just because it's, it's a little bigger than, than a lot of my pieces and it's very complex to draw. Uh, I went through a series of many, many drawings to develop the pieces that I need and still I couldn't visualize the whole third dimension. I'm using, in my drawing contour system, I'm using two-dimensional system to describe a three-dimensional object and in doing that, uh, I can't always visualize the third dimension. Um, I do all my drawings by hand. I feel like I, I can feel the curves much better uh, by, uh, by hand than I could with a computer. I couldn't describe the curves. I don't know that they're geometric curves. Uh, they're what kind of my hand and my eye feel uh, is, is right for a sculpture. So this piece was very difficult to visualize in three dimensions. I knew I wanted to develop kind of a 60 degree lamination or so that would start at the base being counter to the piece and then as the piece developed uh, go up and reinforce uh, the form. Um, so that, that took a little doing. This started out probably I think I used two and a quarter inches so it was much thicker and, and I do that when I'm not quite sure uh, how the final form wants to be. I will let extra material on so that I uh, have some latitude because once I cut out the pieces and assemble them there is no, I mean I've de developed my limits and it can't be any bigger than that and I have to be very careful when I'm working not to take too much off because you can't put it back on again. I um, thought that I developed this technique myself um, but um, a few years after I started, I uh, got a book on the Bauhaus that had a laminated plywood sculpture on the cover. So, uh, that was 40 years before I started, 50. <laughs> so, um, if you don't ever 
really, I guess, invent anything, but I use this kind of in my own method. There are a lot of other people using laminated plywood to do various things, sculpture as well as furniture and things, but uh, um, I was always a fan, I think, through my architectural education of Frank Lloyd Wright and some of his principles of using a lot of little uh, elements to build up a whole was, uh, that, that was his philosophy and I kind of followed in that uh, with my furniture building as well as with my sculpture. So uh, I kind of use a lot of little pieces and build all those up into a, a whole uh, to, to uh, develop my forms. I like to think of my forms as uh, being an integration of um, form, material, and process that, that all those elements go into making up the final work.